Well, while we're talking about parking the bus, talk about Eddie Jones, yeah. talk about the Six Nations. I mean, there was one flare game, wasn't there, against Scotland. The rest, I don't know, fairly strategic. Yeah, it was It was a funny Six Nations, just saying to a few of the lads there. Every, every team seemed to have one good game, um, whether it was England against Scotland, whether it was Scotland against Ireland or Ireland against England. But nobody seemed to string back-to-back -back games together, which, which was odd, really, considering... You know, England had a really good autumn. Ireland had a really good autumn, beating the All Blacks in Chicago. So um, it, it ended up a bit stale, uh, unfortunately. Which, you know, looking ahead to the to the to the Lions tour, uh, makes me worry a little bit. I think prior to Six Nations, I thought I thought as a Lions tour, we we had a really good chance off the back of the form that a lot of the teams were showing, but um, just looked a little bit. All the teams looked a little bit rusty in the in the Six Nations, but you know, I still think. Uh, I still think the boys will be going over to New Zealand, you know, confident. Uh, there's a lot of lot of boys in form, um, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. A bit more Scottish representation this time around because they did perform well, and Warren Gatland sort of challenged them when they came to Twickenham, you know, to get their places on the Lions tour, didn't? He? Yeah, and I and I think I think consistently Scotland have have, have, have improved most out of out of all the home nations, really. You know. Stuart Hogg's got to be got to be nailed on. He's you know he's out and out one of the best back three. Um, you know the the Gray brothers um, have, have both done really well. So you know there's there's some talented boys in that Scottish team, and um, you know I'm sure that you know they'll get a few boys representing. Who goes as number ten in your mind after the after the nations? I think if Johnny Sexton can stay fit, um, I think he'll. He'll probably nick that shirt with with Owen Farrell at 12. I think for me, Owen Farrell is just an unbelievable player. Um, but I think the way he's he's slipped into that 12 spot for England with with Ford at 10, um, you know, he, he just adds such a different dynamic to the to the team. So I think if Johnny Sexton stays fit, he'll be the starting 10 with with Owen at 12. Could Bigger be disappointed with that? Um, I, th I think. You know, Bigger's big has done well for Wales, um, and I think he'll. You know, I think they'll probably take three tens. They'll probably take because um, Owen can slot in at twelve so so easily. Um, you know, the chances are they'll probably take the three of them. To be honest, um, if if they're the three that Warren goes with, who would you? Who do you think would be your starting fifteen? Or is that <sighs> to rattle through them all You're now? It's a no difficult chance. one, isn't it? My back line. I'll go with my back line. Um, it'd be. Conor Murray from Ireland, Johnny Sexton, um, Owen Farrell, Jonathan Joseph. Back three is tough. I'd probably go with, I'd, oh, I'd definitely go with Stuart Hogg at 15. I'd go with Liam Williams on the left wing from Wales. And oh, The other wing spot would be close for me between Jack Knoll, um, Elliot Daly and probably George North yeah. between, between those three. Any nail-ons to go, apart from Stuart Hogg? I think, I think you know, half-backs looking at Johnny Sexton and, and Owen, um, uh, Murray as well. Um, in terms of centres, um, I think it's it's a really it's a really tough one. I think off the back of like we said, I think prior to Six Nations, there were so many players that sort of were, were not nailed on. It's difficult to say nailed on. Um, but then, you know, just sort of stumbled and stuttered through the Six Nations a little bit. So, I think certainly this back end of the season is going to be going to be big for a lot of players. Um, you know, there's some there's some big games domestically in the in Europe um, and in the domestic competitions. So there's, you know, I think Warren will be. I think he's probably not got as many penciled in as he would have liked off the back of the Six Nations, and he'll be and he'll be watching the club club rugby um, back end of the season. And just finally, what chance down there? It's going to be it's going to be tough, mate. Um, you know, I was I was a part of that team in in '05 that that went down there, and you know, on paper we had an incredible team. You know, players, you know, players like Paul O'Connell, Brian Brian O'Driscoll, uh, Jason Robinson, Delalio. You know, we, we had an unbelievable team on paper, and you know we we were up against an All Blacks team that were just equal. It was this. It was almost the start of their ten-year do, uh, dominance with you know Dan Carter and Richie McCaw and you know these sort of players. And um, 
you know the midweek team went pretty well as you'd expect but then you know the, the three test matches were just such a battle um, you know and, and f for them it's, it's a one in a lifetime opportunity to, to play against the Lions um, you know it's once every 12 years we all know the All Blacks how passionate they are you know the the island is just mad, is, is mad rugby um, I think I think it'll be tough I do think it'll be a tough but like I said I think I think we've we've got some really good individuals across the home nations, um, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, Warren Gatlin's uh, proven to to be able to put a good squad together. Um, you know, having won it down in Australia four years ago, so fingers crossed.